psych records. The following report was submitted to the Council of 108 on June 25, 2012 by the British Occult Service, detailing the rise to the prominence of a new paracrime group in Europe and several paranormal freeports in the surrounding area, such as Yurtek, High Brassel, and Three Portlands. Also known as MI-666, the British Occult Service is the primary paranormal agency of the United Kingdom and a member of the Council of 108. Royal Occult Service MI-666, Intelligence Briefing on the Chicago Spectre Europe is being terrorized by a new occult crime agency, with greater reach than any previously observed by any member of the Council of 108. Evidence suggests that this group refers to themselves as the Chicago Spectre, and its purported revival of the long-defunct American occult organized crime syndicate, the Chicago Spirit. The exact connections between the two groups are unclear, as the Chicago Spirit has not been active for approximately 75 years. Any individuals who are involved in the Chicago Spirit are unlikely to still be involved in criminal activities, especially as life-extending methods were outside of the reach of the Chicago Spirit, evidenced by multiple unsuccessful attempts to acquire such. Therefore, it is likely that the Spectre is merely using the name and identity of the Spirit. This research in Chicago Spectre has an unclear scope. They either have multiple branches within multiple cities throughout Europe, each of small size, or are able to easily travel between cities. Incidents have occurred within minutes of each other in cities hundreds of kilometers apart. The Chicago Spectre should be considered and treated as armed and dangerous at all times. The group evidently has access to multiple sources of occult weaponry, from sources such as the Factory, the Scarlet Hammer, and the Chaos Insurgency. The Spectre has been observed using high-power lasers, ghost emulsifiers, and futuristic advanced weaponry. While the Spectre is active throughout Europe, they have not acted in violation of the Veil Protocol. The majority of their actions outside of occult freeports do not constitute a threat to second mission concealment concerns, only breaking civilian laws. Their actions in occult freeports are more bold likely resulting from the low law enforcement presence in such jurisdictions. Evidence suggests that a Mr. Knight is either the leader or a high-ranking member of the Chicago Spectre. This comes from multiple occasions in which notes signed by Mr. Knight have been discovered at the scene of the crime, taking credit for the acts in question. The Chicago Spectre has been assigned to Frey's Disco. Based on the information given in this report, the Council of 108 has made the decision to classify the Mr. Knight alluded to within as UTE-1919 Disco Father, and began action against him along with the rest of the Chicago Spectre. Psych Records On July 14, 2012, the Chicago Spectre successfully robbed a bank in Northern Ireland. Strike Team 0638, the Untouchables, was deployed in response, and destroyed one vehicle as it was fleeing the scene. One individual, a Type Yellow Entity Parathreat, designated PTE-0781 Disco Yellow, named Connell O'Sullivan was captured. PTE-0781 Disco Yellow possessed the ability to transmute his body mass into a paranatural black crystal, giving him enhanced durability and physical strength. This allowed him to survive the munitions used by the Global Occult Coalition against the vehicle he was within, but did not impede capture. Recorded Interrogation Log Date: July 17, 2012 Interviewer, Hawthorne 87635109-0638 Interviewed, PTE-0781 Disco Yellow Preamble PTE-0781 Disco Yellow was questioned again by Agent Hawthorne of the Global Occult Coalition. This specific interview was to ascertain information concerning UTE-1919 Disco Father. Further information may be requested from the Records Management General. Hello, Connell. We wanted to speak about your employer in this meeting. What? The boss? No can do, buddy. There's too much about that one. You know, we've been working on new blades. We always are, here at the Coalition. From what you've told us, the Spectre is the same way with their gadgets and whatnot. Is this going somewhere? This is one of those blades. Look at it. It's got runes scribed all over it. Runes for killing and cutting. 
It's supposed to be able to liquidate anything. The boys in the lab tell me it could cut even something that's practically indestructible. That's what they say you are, right? Listen, I want to work with you. But the boss? There are rules about the boss. It's like Fey Law, and I know something about that myself. What, is he unnameable? Just avoid a name, then. Not quite as otherly as those esteemed and gracious folk for whom titles should be avoided. Really trying to avoid their wrath, huh? I've spoken about the victims of a not-so-ancient genocide a bit too much to be as safe as I would like. Well, there's one person in particular you haven't spoken enough about if you want to be safe. Look, the boss is something of a boogeyman. You give up his name, and, well, bad things happen. I see. Well, if he tried to get you, he'd have to go through us, and that's not going to reassure you so much as to point out we do want to kill him, and we've killed worse. <laughs> that's fair. He wouldn't be able to get to me here. Open up, then. Tell us what you know about the boss. The boss is something of a weird type, compared to the rest of us. The Spectre is a high-tech outfit, right? All the lasers. Rather flashy, all things considered. We did assign you the name Disco. Yeah, all our gizmos look like a Disco. You ever get the chance to look inside one of our vans? I have not, but that isn't relevant. Back to Mr. Knight. Right. The boss doesn't deal with the same stuff as we do. His dog is this massive beast, and his magic is different from anything the rest of us have ever seen. Interesting. He's older, correct? Oh, for sure. He's been in the business for a long time. Since the American Prohibition, I think. He's alluded to it and talked about that a lot. Has he ever talked about the Chicago spirit? He's mentioned that a few times. His old gang, I think. That's interesting. He's a weird one. Obviously, he's been in the business for quite some time now, but everything I've heard leads me to think that the Chicago spirit wasn't exactly his first outfit. I think he's been around longer than that. Much longer. Not human, I take it. Absolutely not. I ain't got a clue in hell what he is. Any more you can tell us? Hmm. Well, one thing I can tell you is that he has friends in high places, and just about everywhere. He'll always come in with gifts from friends, stuff from the craziest of places. Marshall and Carter, the factory, the Scarlet Hammer, even the insurgency once. Gifts? That's what he'd call them, at least. Not sure how accurate that is. Oh. And the other thing is that he seemed to have friends in other places. Such as? Other places. Other worlds. Places where High Brazil was destroyed by a kraken in the 80s. Worlds where the veil is up. Even one where he ain't even in the Spectre. Still talks to the man in charge, of course. Sounds like he's well connected. <laughs> you have no idea. Two weeks after the conclusion of this interview, PTE-0781 Disco Yellow choked on a piece of his daily dinner. In the middle of choking, PTE-0781 Disco Yellow's capabilities partially and involuntarily activated, preventing application of the Heimlich Maneuver and leading to his death as his lungs converted to indestructible crystal incapable of respiration. Guards report that prior to his death, PTE-0781 Disco Yellow was heard to have been talking to himself within his cell for upwards of one hour. Based on the limited time that PTE-0781 Disco Yellow was in Coalition custody, this was highly atypical behavior. Psych Records Following the tentative identification of UTE-1919 Disco Father, a review of Global Occult Coalition archives was conducted in order to find any potential matches. One such match was found within the records of the USA FBI UIU, made accessible to the Coalition by the USA Pentagram. The paramilitary branch of the USA Department of Defense and member of the Council of 108. The Unusual Incidents Unit had prior interactions with UTE-1919 Disco Father, and produced the following report for the Department of Diplomacy covering the individual. 
Additionally, the UIU has offered to assist the Coalition with the tracking of UTE-1919 Disco Father, as he remains a wanted criminal under their jurisdiction. This offer has been turned down outside of Three Portlands, which remains under UIU jurisdiction. Unusual Incidents Unit Case File Summary 1941-016 Chicago Revenant The so-called Mr. Knight first came to the attention of the Unusual Incidents Unit in 1941, following a series of murders associated with the defunct crime outfit, the Chicago Spirit. In these murders, Mr. Knight sent tips to the FBI, indicating his own involvement in case. All victims were previously involved with the Chicago Spirit leadership. Mr. Knight appears to have targeted specific individuals who knew some specific detail concerning the Chicago Spirit, which was only privy to the leadership. In one notable instance, Mr. Knight refrained from killing former members of the Chicago Spirit, despite an easy opportunity. The UIU does not know the exact nature of the information Mr. Knight was trying to conceal. In response, the UIU attempted to find members of the Chicago Spirit who would be able to provide information concerning the identity of Mr. Knight and the nature of the secret he was trying to conceal. This was complicated by the position Mr. Knight had held in the Chicago Spirit, being regarded as a mythical figure of unknown truth. The UIU was unable to find any individuals who had meaningfully interacted with Mr. Knight. Following these initial incidents in 1941, the UIU has had limited evidence that Mr. Knight has remained active at a low level. A brief summary of these incidents follows. Documents recovered from a Marshall Carter and Dark Auction House implicate Mr. Knight in the acquiring of several items that were later sold. Some of these items were sold by Mr. Knight in 1933, while a second set was acquired by Mr. Knight upon request by Mr. Dark in 1956. An entity entered Pentagram offices under the name of Mr. Knight for a period of three hours on June 17, 1972. While this entity signed in as Mr. Knight at the front desk, no other records of this event exist. A UIU embed within the Wanderers Library reported that for a brief period in 1984, security for the Wanderers Library was provided by Mr. Knight and a small resurgence of the Chicago spirit. This group was not active outside of the Wanderers Library during this time. In 1996, the hard copies of UIU files concerning the Chicago spirit spontaneously vanished. A note reading, thank you for holding on to these after all these years, Mr. Knight, was found in place of the documents. Digital documentation was unaffected. In 2001, the security of a Pentagram weapons development project was breached. A single prototype weapon was found to be missing, with no other items or data misplaced. Login information for the security vault was found to be glitched, only reading Mr. Knight for the credentials entered. Mr. Knight A failed 2006 terrorist attack perpetrated by a Chaos Insurgency cell was prevented by a lone civilian shooting the Chaos Insurgent holding the Eigen weapon payload. This civilian cooperated with UIU investigators who arrived on the scene, identifying himself as Mr. Knight. The investigator who interviewed Mr. Knight during this time was unaware of the history of Mr. Knight. Due to the prior history of Mr. Knight and the Chicago Spirit, it is believed that he may be planning similar criminal ventures in the future. Mr. Knight is believed to be armed and dangerous at all times, and has occupied a position on the UIU 13 Most Wanted Fugitives list since its inception in 1950. Threat Entity Database Entry Threat ID UTE-1919 Disco Father Mr. Knight Authorized Response Level 2 Sub-moderate threat Description UTE-1919 Disco Father is a humanoid parrot threat, believed to be the founder of both the Chicago Spirit and the Chicago Spectre. Currently, UTE-1919 Disco Father is in control of the majority of Chicago Spectre operations. UTE-1919 Disco Father is believed to possess reality-affecting capabilities of some variety, but this has not been confirmed. Getting an ARAD reading of UTE-1919 Disco Father is currently a high priority for Coalition agents. It is not believed that the parrot threat is either a current or former human entity. 
The exact nature of the origin of the entity is unknown, although Professors Kelzan, Bolas, and Long of the International Center for the Study of Unified Thaumatology have put forth the hypothesis that UTE-1919 Disco Father is an incarnation of an unknown human emotion. The proper name of the parent threat is speculated to be a nomenclative hazard by certain factions of the Global Occult Coalition, most notably Psychic's Division strike teams assigned to the Chicago Spectre. If these concerns are accurate, the name of the parent threat leads to increased fatality rates and parent threat gaining awareness of the speaker. This is not confirmed, but suspected to be likely. High levels of misinformation are present concerning UTE-1919 Disco Father a considerable amount of which appear to have been circulated by the Chicago Spirit and UTE-1919 Disco Father himself. As such, little verified information concerning UTE-1919 Disco Father exists to the Coalition. The pair threat has, as of now, been able to avoid capture and proper identification by the Coalition. All pictures taken by the Coalition are immediately destroyed by localized data corruption on its face and identifying features. While brought into custody several times, he has managed to escape on all occasions. Rules of Engagement As the name of the parent threat is a nomenclative hazard, agents are to solely refer to the parent threat as UTE-1919 Disco Father. UTE-1919 Disco Father and the rest of the Chicago Spectre are to be under constant surveillance by global occult coalition forces. Should any credible evidence be discovered concerning the location of UTE-1919 Disco Father, a Strike Team should be dispatched to deal with the threat. Currently, Strike Team 0638, The Untouchables, is handling UTE-1919 Disco Father and the Chicago Spectre. Currently, capture is preferred over immediate termination for UTE-1919 Disco Father. This is primarily so that he may be brought to trial for his crimes against third mission concerns and so that other elements of the Chicago Spectre may likewise be dealt with. Psych Records UTE-1919 Disco Father has been observed in a small number of Chicago Spectre operations thwarted by global occult coalition forces. In all of these incidents, UTE-1919 Disco Father was able to avoid long-term capture by the global occult coalition. A brief summary of each incident follows. For more details on any, consult the appropriate listed file. File A7U81-082 On August 22, 2012, the Chicago Spectre robbed Sparta Bank in Dusseldorf, Germany. Upon arriving at the scene, Strike Team 0638 operatives disguised as plainclothes police officers were able to control Hume and EVE levels to counteract the effects of any reality bending, and moved in to arrest the Chicago Spectre. All Spectre members inside were unusually cooperative with Coalition agents, and were placed in the armored transport vehicles. One of these Spectre members was UTE-1919 Disco Father, who was placed into a vehicle by himself. As the vans were driving away from the scene, an entity collided with the vehicle carrying UTE-1919 Disco Father at high speeds, measured as upwards of 250 km per hour. Security footage of this entity is unclear but it appears to be a pair of human legs with no visible torso or body above the waist. This entity proceeded to collide with all other transports, allowing the Chicago Spectre and UTE-1919 Disco Father to escape. This parent threat has been designated UTE-7311 Disco Beige. Little money was stolen from Sparta Bank during this time, but several specific safe deposit boxes were broken into and emptied. Two of these boxes were registered to Allison Chow. PTE-0008 Regnant Black. The contents of either are unknown. Evidence suggests that UTE-1919 Disco Father targeted several specific boxes during this robbery, rather than acting indiscriminately. How he acquired knowledge of which to target is likewise unknown. File T3-P53-024 On October 31, 2012, Global Occult Coalition reconnaissance teams discovered a Chicago Spectre drug smuggling operation in Seville, Spain. Strike Team 0638 was deployed to stop the operation and apprehend the Chicago Spectre. <laughs> a raid conducted on November 2, 2012 was initially successful, with several members of the Chicago Spectre apprehended by the Physics Strike Team, including UTE-1919 Disco Father. However, 
a manifestation event of PTE-1227 Con, the Golden Horde, occurred within Seville at the same time, close to the building the Chicago Spectre was operating out. This resulted in widespread panic in the city. As the strike team was the only major coalition agency in the city at the time, and PTE-1227 Con is a responsible five parrot threat that threatens second mission concealment concerns, as opposed to the Response Level 2 Chicago Spectre, which threatens third mission protection concerns, the strike team was reassigned to respond to PTE-1227 Con. While the situation involving PTE-1227 Con was quickly resolved, by the time the strike team was able to return to the location of the Chicago Spectre, all evidence of the smuggling operation had vanished. File HOY 38-0631 On November 11, 2012, the Chicago Spectre staged a heist upon the High Brazil Royal Palace during the middle of a gala being held by Queen Morgan II of High Brazil and the Four Cities. During the raid, UTE-1919 Disco Father entered the throne room of the High Brazil Palace by himself, while other members of the Chicago Spectre attempted to break into the Royal Vault. The High Brazil Royal Guard would mobilize to defend Queen Morrigan, prevent the break into the vault, and to kill UTE-1919 Disco Father. No attempts on the life or safety of Queen Morrigan were made that night. The High Brazil Vault was not breached. Thaumatological wards on the vault activated within seconds of the attempt beginning, killing all members of the Chicago Spectre attempted to break into the vault and binding their souls to defend the vault eternally. The Royal Guard refreshed the runes and cleaned the vault. UTE-1919 Disco Father was confronted in the throne room by the Royal Guard. During this time, the Royal Guards attempted to kill UTE-1919 Disco Father, but were faced with sudden failure of their Type Green and Blue abilities. UTE-1919 Disco Father proceeded to non-fatally incapacitate the guards, and disappeared from the palace without a trace. Nothing was recorded as missing or stolen from the High Brazil Palace. Physics Records On November 30, 2012, a safe house in Three Portlands, believed to be a major operating hub for the Chicago Spectre, was discovered. Furthermore, it was determined that UTE-1919 Disco Father would be at this safe house for a period of three days, between December 18, 2012 and December 21, 2012. A raid was conducted. Recorded Transcript Log Date December 20, 2012 Strike Team ST-0638 Agent Stormbreath 9623847-0638 Preamble Strike Team 0638 The Untouchables was deployed to liquidate UTE-1919 Disco and attacked the Chicago Spectre, following the discovery of a Chicago Spectre base of operations. A transcript of this follows, recovered from the ocular and auditory implants of Stormbreath, the only member of the strike team to encounter UTE-1919 Disco Father. Ocular and auditory implants activate. Stormbreath is sitting in the back of a Coalition van, alongside other members of Strike Team 0638. Strike Team 0638 exits the van, and enters a tactical position around the building. Two members of Strike Team 0638 use a battering ram to break down the door. Members of Strike Team 0638 begin to enter, with their weapons raised. Stormbreath enters the building. Two members of the Chicago Spectre are in the antechamber. One is holding a heavily rusted gun, and the second has a cybernetic arm with a gun attachment. Shit, it's the gun fr Strike Team 0638 opens fire on the two members of the Chicago Spectre, killing both. Stormbreath, alongside three other members of Strike Team 0638, enter a secondary hallway, away from the antechamber, with their weapons at the ready. The four members of Strike Team 0638 reach a door in the hallway, one shoots to lock off the door. The members of Strike Team 0638 enter the room and search it. No members of the Chicago Spectre are found, although copious evidence, paracriminal supplies, and weapons are in the room. Strike Team 0638 exits the room and continues down the hallway. UTE-7311 Disco Beige crashes through a door later down the hallway and lands in the middle. It turns to Strike Team 0638. Leggy isn't a joke? UTE-7311 Disco Beige charges towards Stormbreath and the other members of Strike Team 0638. 
Storm Breath is knocked to the ground by UTE-7311 Disco Beige, which continues down the hallway. Storm Breath rolls onto his belly and assumes a tactical position, with his rifle propped on his arm. UTE-7311 Disco Beige is visible for three frames before rounding the corner. Storm Breath fires at UTE-7311 Disco Beige, but is not able to hit. The four members of Strike Team proceed down the hallway, continuing to search rooms for more members of the Chicago Spectre. No members are found. After entering a new room, a single member, now known to be LTE-4268 Disco Purple of the Chicago Spectre is found, trying to pack money into a bag. Put your hands in the air! Under pressure! A large, nude, gold-skinned humanoid, LTE-4269 Disco Purple Child, manifests in the air behind LTE-4268 Disco Purple, hovering slightly above the ground. The gravity in the room significantly increases. Hawthorne fires from the ground at LTE-4268 Disco Purple. All bullets fall to the ground mid-air after being observed by LTE-4269 Disco Purple Child. Storm Breath manages to stand and jumps across the room, removing HSA-3668 Caliburn from its belt. LTE-4269 Disco Purple Child raises a hand towards Storm Breath, causing the gravity to increase further. Storm Breath quickly falls, crashing through the floor. After lying on the floor on the level directly below for 30 seconds, Storm Breath rises. He appears to be limping and clutching his side. Storm Breath leans down and grabs HSA-3668 Caliburn from the floor. A door opens behind Storm Breath. UTE-1919 Disco Father enters the room with UTE-1947 Disco Fiji beside him. Oh. Hello. Storm Breath attacks UTE-1919 Disco with HSA-3668 Caliburn, stabbing him in the shoulder. HSA-3668 Caliburn is embedded to the hilt. UTE-1919 Disco Father falls to the ground. Command, target has been liquidated. Requesting extract. Too much ambition in that, I'm afraid. You'll never get far with that. UTE-1919 Disco Father removes HSA-3668 Caliburn from his shoulder and stands up. UTE-1947 Disco Fiji lunges toward Storm Breath and forces him to the ground standing on his chest. UTE-1919 Disco Father brings HSA-3668 Caliburn to the ocular implant of Storm Breath. The ocular implant, being damaged, deactivates. The auditory implant deactivates as well. Conclusion: Agent Storm Breath was found to be MIA after his operation. All other members of Strike Team 0638 survived. Six members of the Chicago Spectre were killed in the operation, and twelve were captured. A further ten, including UTE-1919 Disco Father and UTE-7311 Disco Beige, remain at large. A small wrapped box was discovered in front of the Global Occult Coalition Embassy five days later, with the following note attached to the side. A Spectre is haunting Europe. The Spectre of Chicago. Merry Christmas, Mr. Knight. The box contained a large amount of confetti classified documents from multiple Coalition member organizations, and the dismembered body of Agent Stormbreath. All documents destroyed, ocular and auditory implants removed and logs extracted. Agent Stormbreath humanely euthanized.